We're working on problem 4.3 of the Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2 Final Exam Practice Problems. Give an instance and its minimal worst case total probe cost with five points that illustrates that binary search is not an optimal approach in general. Okay, well I guess this answers the question of whether binary search is an optimal approach in general according to this minimal worst case total probe cost measure. By the way, I mean, this isn't necessarily the measure to use to decide whether an algorithm is optimal, but this problem has forced us in that direction. Okay, um, it asks for five points. Me, personally, I, I'm actually going to start with four points, because five points is bigger. I'd rather start with something smaller, see if I can build it with four points. If this were an exam, I'd probably dive straight in with five points, because it promises me I'm going to get it with five points. It asks for five points. If I give a four-point answer, then whoever's grading me on the exam would be free to give me a zero, although I hope they wouldn't. Uh, but I'm going to treat this more like a, a problem that I actually want to solve for, you know, the physicists who have some kind of particle, linear particle trap, and they're having me uh, determine something about the properties of the particles that they've trapped in there, uh, as opposed to for an exam. And in that case, I would really want to explore the problem step by step and really understand what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and have my indexes. I'll just say I now, and my values, and my costs. And I know I'm going to try an example with four points. And again, I'm using zero-based indexing. <clears throat> I'm not going to fill in the values of the costs yet. Obviously, the values need to be sorted in increasing order, and the costs are going to have various properties. Uh, but what I really want to think about is, what will binary search do, and what might we do to force something different? And actually, the first thing I notice is maybe why this problem asked for five points rather than four, which is, well, what's the first index that binary search will probe? Is it index one, or is it index two? Who knows? With five indexes, we know for sure what the first index binary search will probe. Uh, so maybe that's why the problem asks for five. Uh, I'm just going to say it'll probe one first, but I'm going to bear in mind that it doesn't have to. So let me, let me just uh, sketch out what the tree would look like for binary search. Certainly over here, it'll go here. On the right, who knows? I mean, it might go like this, right? Or it could instead go like this. It could start here. On the left, it's certainly going to go here. There's no question there. But on the right, it could go here next instead. Okay, And the mirrors of that are all also possible binary search patterns. Binary search is, is pretty vague uh, at this point. Um, but let's see. Are there any interesting properties? Um, well, we know the worst case cost is going to be at the leaves. As, as long as costs are non-negative, we can always go to the leaves. If we allow costs to be negative, then the worst case cost may not be at the leaves. Uh, let's just check quick if we're assuming non-negative costs. It says, it says nothing about whether costs have to be positive. But you know what? I'm going to say that costs have to be non-negative. Here's going to be my argument for non-negative. If there are any negative costs, then here's what I'm going to do before any algorithm that runs. I'm going to probe every point with a negative cost. I'm going to gather up all that negative cost mass. And now I'm going to account all of those points as having a probe cost of zero, which is accurate. It says uh, that checking um, that the probing additional times costs nothing, right? And every algorithm now benefits from that negative cost. So there's really no point in having negative costs. Negative costs are just like candy hidden underneath e points that, that you really want to, to probe. They're totally uninteresting. Every algorithm will probe all of those points, and it doesn't even care if it finds the target it's looking for. It's just going to keep probing until it's probed all the negative costs. So we won't worry about negative costs. We'll just assume uh, all non-negative costs. I'm just going to make a note of this off to the side. Assume cost p greater than or equal to zero for all p for all instances. Uh, because else will preprocess to probe all negative cost points. Okay, so 
that's a that's a safe assumption and it's safe precisely because we've pointed out that it really doesn't matter if the cost of any points are negative if the cost of those points are negative every algorithm has to do the same thing which is probe all of the negative cost points and then it's still stuck with the same problem that we have to solve right here so the version with negative costs reduces to the version without negative costs so back to this we know the costs are non negative that also means we know that once we have one of these trees like the trees that we have up here that we drew for binary search we really only have to pay attention to the leaves in the trees because the leaves will be at least as expensive as their ancestors and so the worst case node will be one of those leaves and that means that we're either going to probe both of these points or we're going to probe all three of these points in the top figure and in the bottom figure we're either going to probe both of these points or we're going to probe all three of these points and you notice what's interesting here is regardless we either probe both of the left points or all three of the right points okay so one or the other of those is going to be worst case and if we mirror these we end up with the same sort of thing so what binary search is going to do on a four point example is it's basically going to look for what's what's the cheapest the left two points or the right three points uh sorry what what's the cheapest worst case dividing up into the left two points and the right three or the right two points and the left three Okay, and that decision will be based on do we use index one or index two as the first point. So maybe we can have a probe pattern that kind of jumps across. Maybe maybe that'll be better somehow. Like what if what if we make a tree? I'm gonna draw my tree down on the bottom now since I don't have space up above. What if we make a tree that starts not at one or two, but at zero or three? And again, those are symmetric, so I'm not going to worry too much about which it starts at. So I'm going to have it start at three. Now, what's left at that point, we're going to be forced to go to the left, right? Because if we find what we're looking for at index three, or if what we're looking for has a value larger than what we find at index three, that's clearly not the worst case. We could make our algorithm do worse by forcing it to go to the left. Uh, but if we do go to the left, we're left with three points, and what we said up in the previous problem was with three points, binary search really is the best strategy. So we can fill in the rest of our tree very easily. It has to binary search through the rest of the points. And that in itself is interesting, by the way. As soon as we've broken down into a sub-problem that's of a shape that we're familiar with, we can use the solution we created for that familiar sub-problem to solve the whole problem. And those words should be tickling certain ideas in your head from our algorithms course. There, there's something familiar about that idea of breaking a problem down into sub-problems and optimal solutions to the sub-problems building up together to create optimal solutions to the overall problem. But regardless, this is kind of the only candidate tree that might beat uh, binary search. And let's look at what it looks like. It either goes to this leaf down here, in which case it probes the rightmost three points, or it probes this point, it skips that point, point two and it probes the left two points so is there any distribution of costs where the worst case cost of this one is not as bad as the worst case cost of binary search I think the answer is just clearly no as long as as long as binary search is allowed to pick whichever of one or two is the better route for its tree uh, then I mean look what happens Okay, so these versions of binary search at the top here, they get their worst case cost is the worse of this cost here on the left or this cost here on the right. So the sum of the costs of zero and one and the sum of the costs of one, two, and three. Our worst case cost down here is the worse of the sum of the costs of zero, one, and three or the sum of the costs of one, two, and three. Well, one, two, and three, that's just the same as binary search. No advantage there. And zero, one, and three, that's actually worse than binary search. So there is no way that anything but binary search is gonna be best here. Now, 
<clears throat> there are two variants of binary search here, and one might be better than the other. And we haven't even talked about how you determine which is better than the other. But that still doesn't conclusively prove that binary search isn't the best approach. So four points clearly isn't enough. We need a fifth. So let's put in five points. And I'm just going to put in the indexes first. Zero, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to start drawing these trees. Now binary search we know is going to start here. And then we saw up here, uh, it doesn't really matter whether you know it zigs and then zags or whether it zigs and then zigs again. Either way, we're going to go down to the leaf anyway. So if binary search is forced to go to the left from 2, then it's going to accumulate the cost of 1 and 0 uh, in the worst case, regardless. Whether it accumulates 0 first and then 1 or it accumulates 1 first and then 0, it doesn't really matter. So I'm not going to stress out about drawing all the different binary search trees there could possibly be. There's four of them, but who cares? They're all going to have the same minimal worst case cost. That's what we learned when we did four points. So that's our binary search. So this is binary search up here, binary search. And what's its worst case cost? Well, its worst case cost is the worst of that one and this one. Now the question is, can we make a tree that will have a different set of leaves and will maybe do better than binary search. Um, what I'm tempted to do, I mean, there, this time there are multiple choices, right? We could try for one or three being the root. If we choose two to be the root, by the way, we're stuck. We might as well do binary search. There's just not enough flexibility left. We already said if the problem is as small as, uh, we've actually shown if the problem is as small as one point, two points, three points, or even four points, some variant of binary search is optimal. So we need to pick something different than two for the root, because if we pick two for the root, it divides the, the problem up into two subproblems, and each of the subproblems is of size only two, and so binary search is clearly the best choice. Okay. So we're not going to pick two as the root, which means we're either going to pick one or three, and you know those are just mirrors of each other, so we might as well say three. Okay, so we're either going to pick three or we're going to pick four. Um, so I don't know what you think is better. Uh, kind of feels like if we've seen binary search is so good so far, um, maybe we should pick three. Um, and because I like three, I'm going to pick four because I'm going to guess four will be easy to debunk. So if I picked four as the root, which I think is the less promising one, uh, Guess what happens? If I pick four as the root, as soon as I pick a root, I divide the problem into two subproblems. An optimal solution to each of those subproblems, two optimal solutions to the two subproblems, combine together to form an optimal solution to the overall problem given that choice of root. Okay, well, here, picking four as the root, I actually only get one subproblem. The right hand side of four is nothing. So obviously, if the value I'm looking for is larger than the value at index four, then I'm done. So I've now broken the problem down into one of size 4. And what's the optimal algorithm at size 4? It's binary search. So I'm going to have to do some variant of binary search at that point, which means, hmm, well, that doesn't obviously mean that this isn't the right approach. So we're going to have to keep walking through it. Uh, let's see. I'm either going to go to, I'm either going to go like this, or there are two different trees that might actually be different. I might instead choose to go like this. Now again, along, um, along this branch here and this branch here, it doesn't matter if we zigzag or zigzag. We already figured that out before. Since we're going all the way down to the leaves, all that matters is we'll accumulate the cost for both of those nodes. But let's see what the total cost along the paths are. It's either this or it's this or else in the top case it's all of this or else it's these. Hmm. Could we make that better than binary search? Maybe we could. Let's see if we can lay out costs to make that better than binary search. 
what we want is uh, I mean let's pick one let's let's pick the uh, the top one maybe we can do it with the top one what we want is we want the worst of binary so we want the worst case cost for binary search which is the larger of the sum of the costs at 2 3 and 4 and the sum of the costs at 0 1 and 2 we want the larger of those to be bigger than the sum of the costs at 1 2 3 and 4 and the sum of the costs at 1 2 and 4 Well, clearly we don't want the sum of the costs at 2, 3, and 4 to be the worst one for binary search. If it is, we've got the costs of 2, 3, and 4 collected up in here, plus some more. Um, so our, our new algorithm is just going to be worse than binary search. So for binary search, the, the bad side has to be the left side. It's got to be the 0, 1, 2 side. That's got to be higher cost than the right. Um, and then... We have to make it so that although this is higher cost than this, um, this, let's see, down here, the higher of the two costs is smaller. Let's just try something out to make it higher cost on the left. Let's make it 10, 10, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so now the left is higher cost. Now down here, our costs for this tree right here would be 10, 11, 12, 13 for the yellow path and for the uh, pink path, I'm going to highlight for the pink path here, 1 plus 20 is 21. Ooh, that's not good enough. That's, that's just as expensive as the yellow path for binary search. Uh, so we want to make the pink path cheaper that means that we want to uh, probably raise the cost of the root for binary search. So let's make that a 5 and that a 1. And let's see how that goes. So now the pink path is still 21, but binary search is yellow path, um, the, one, the one down here. Uh, that path is 10 plus 10 plus 5, so it's 25 is the worst case cost for binary search. But the worst case cost for our algorithm down below is only 21. Uh, is that really the worst case cost? What about the, the yellow cost here? That's 10 plus 5 is 15, plus 1 plus 1 is 16, 17. So yeah, take a look at this. We've got a cost of a worst case cost down here of 21 and a worst case cost up here of 25. So binary search is a worse solution. Even when I pick the, the most extreme point, the four, I feel like if I'd, if I'd used three as the root, I probably could have made a, an even more stark contrast. I don't know for sure. That's worth trying. Give it a try yourself. Uh, but we've got a counterexample right here. And the values don't even matter. I've got the costs. I need values too. So let me fill in values. Uh, I'll keep going with odd numbers. Who really cares? 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. The values don't even matter. They just have to be sorted and distinct. That's all that matters to us. Let's make sure we've solved the problem. The problem says, give an instance and its minimal worst case total probe cost with five points that illustrate binary search is not an optimal approach. Oh, we're not done. Um, I've shown an algorithm that does better, but I haven't proved that it's actually the minimal worst case total probe cost. Um, is it actually minimal? Well, let's see here. Um, we know that choosing the number two as the root is not optimal. Uh, the question is, would choosing something else as the root be optimal? We can actually try all the roots because we know once we make our choice of root, then binary search is the best algorithm from then on because the subproblems will be of size at most four. Um, so let's just run a quick analysis here. If we choose 10 as the root, Oh, sorry, if we choose index 1, index 0 as the root with a cost of 10, then we are either, our, our worst case is going to be either 10 plus 10 plus 5 is 25. That's no good. That's if we pick index 2 as the root of the subtree. Let, let me draw this because I'm talking through it and I'm recognizing that uh, it's probably a little hard to follow. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 are my indexes. I'm going to leave the values out and just put the costs in next. 10, 10, 5, 1, 1. Okay. 
So let's say that I chose this is the root. So this is the root. Then the subtree either has this shape, because it chooses index 2 as the root, or alternatively, it has, and erase that one, this shape, because it chooses index 3 as the root of the subtree. We don't know which of those is better. We mentioned before binary search is the best, but we don't know which binary search. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the version that chooses index 2, and then I'll try the version that chooses index 3. So this version either on this leaf accumulates a cost of 25, or on this leaf over here it accumulates a cost of 7 plus 10 is 17, so its minimal worst case cost is 25. Sorry, its worst case cost is 25. That's not a minimal worst case cost. We're hoping 21 is a minimal worst case cost. Okay, so 0 is not the best choice. Let's erase that. Starting at 0 is not the best choice. Maybe probing 1 first is the best choice. Let's try it. If we probe 1 first, then we actually know what the whole rest of the tree looks like right away. It looks like that. Okay, so we've got three leaves now. That's actually pretty promising. Uh, the leftmost leaf will have this cost, 20. That's pretty good. Okay, that's better than 21 so far, but that's not necessarily the worst case cost. Uh, the middle leaf will have these three involved, right? because it's going to start here, and then it's going to go here and accumulate the cost there. Uh, then it's going to go here and accumulate the cost there. Uh, that's only 16. Um, that's not as bad as 20, so so far the worst case cost remains 20. How about the last option? The last leaf, of course, it still has us visit the root. Then it has us visit this and this. That's only a cost of 12. Aha! This is an even better solution. Its worst case cost is only 20. So this is no longer the best solution here. This is, so far, the best algorithm. We better keep trying. Uh, I will sketch, I think I've got room to sketch one more set of indexes, which is all we need, because we know choosing 2 as the root is not the best option. We tried that up at the top here. Choosing 2 is not the best option of the root. Um, we tried choosing 4. We tried that just above here. That was not the best option. So we only need to try 3. If we try 3, again, we know just what our tree looks like. It looks like that. And I can see pretty quickly that this is not going to be as good as the 20 here, because our leftmost leaf accumulates this cost. It skips index 2, goes to index 1, and then it grabs index 0. That's a cost of 21. So the worst case cost of this algorithm is at least 21, which is already larger than the 20 that we found over here. Um, so that algorithm on the left is best. But let's go ahead and finish, uh, just for fun. So let's see, I'll put blue next. So it's going to accumulate the cost here, and then it's going to accumulate the cost in there. That's 16. And then lastly, in purple, the rightmost leaf is only cost 2. Well, that makes it hard to see what was in there, but it's a 1 underneath the 3. Um, so clearly the worst case cost is 21. So we can, we can annotate both of these as 21, and neither one of these algorithms is the best. This is the best algorithm. This is the minimal worst case total probe cost. And this is our instance. I left out the values, so let me put those in. Index cost values are, and again, the values do not matter as long as they're legal. 13579 is legal, so would 1234 be, so would negative 2, 5, 23.2, and 58, and 90, you know, whatever you want to choose. Now, if you were watching really carefully, you probably noticed that I skipped some things. Uh, you may not have. Uh, I had to go back and re-watch and double-check my answer to notice that I'd skipped some things. Uh, what I had skipped, uh, for example, uh, check out this tree right here. Uh, I never double-checked that that tree didn't give me an even better worst-case cost. It turns out that it doesn't. Uh, and we can actually tell that it, it definitely won't do any better than binary search, because you can see that it, in the pink, gets the total of indexes 2, 3, and 4, 
and binary search has that as one of its options as well. And in the yellow, it gets the total of 0, 1, and 2, and 4. Okay. And binary search only has the total of 0, 1, and 2 on the left. So that approach can't possibly be better than binary search, regardless of what the costs are. Unfortunately, the spot where I skipped something else used to be over here, and I deleted it. Uh, that's when we tried 0 as the first index, and you remember I mentioned there were two possible subtrees for the remaining four indices after we probed 0. One of those subtrees had 2 as the root of the subtree, and one of them had 3. I only actually tried the one with 2 as the root of the subtree. It turns out the one with 3 as the root of the subtree does even worse than the one with 2 as the root. And what we can, what we can do to see that is if you start with 0, and then you're going to accumulate the cost at 3, you're also going to accumulate the cost at 2 and 1 because you're going to be forced in the leaf to, in the leaf case, to look at both of the things to the left of 3 after you probe 3 if the target value forces you onto that side. And so you're going to sum up all the costs of 0, 1, 2, and 3, and that's 26. That's actually the worst we've seen so far. So that is not a good algorithm at all. So we did come to the right conclusion. I'm sorry that I, I skipped a couple of points in coming to that conclusion. Uh, hopefully you would go over and check your work and see that you skipped things uh, just like I did. My apologies.